Hey, aloha my internet family. How are you? Beautiful day here in sunny Southern California, but I did want to take some time to share with you guys a new technique that I figured out in Simplify 3D. Um, well, new to me anyway, hopefully new to you guys. So over the past week or so, I've been working on designing a new logo for the channel. And a special thanks goes out to Travis over at A Pyro Design uh, for coaching me through some of the techniques of developing a logo. And it was it was a lot of fun, and I'm actually happy with the uh, the end results. Um, but doing that, I aside from coming up with a logo that could go graphically on the screen or onto a T-shirt or something like that, I also wanted to do something that was 3D printable. Um, and while doing that, I came up with a neat technique in Simplify 3D for actually using the built-in Convert Image to 3D tool um, to, to layer the image and over top of each other to be able to create depth and maintain a little bit of 3D-ness. 3D-ness, is that a word? Yeah, 3D-ness, uh, depth, whatever we want to call it, to that. Um, even if the plane comes out the top. Now. I'm going to tell you right now the print quality of what I'm going to show you as the examples are obviously not the best print quality and that's not what I'm after here. Um, I'm more wanting to show you these techniques. I, I do need to put a smaller nozzle on the printer to be able to get these to come out better. Um, but that's kind of an example. Let me see if I can get it to focus on that. It's not wanting to focus, but we'll pull it back. You'll see it in Simplify 3D too, but um, did it twice and I'll show you the difference. That one I did with it rotated so that the logo side was down so that it would get the reflectivity of it. So let's head over to Simplify 3D and I will show you the technique that I used uh, to put this together. Okay, so over here on the computer, what I want to show you is that it is important for this process to work, your logo needs to be binary, um, meaning black and white or two contrasting colors like this so that it can create depth between them. Um, I did this in a photo editor, just selecting my, my regular logo and kind of cutting and pasting, uh, creating a, a, a trace around it or a float around it to be able to uh, isolate it down and just use a, a flood fill to do that. Um, I am by no means a graphic guy, so I'm not going to, to even attempt to explain to you how to do that. Uh, so over here in Simplify 3D, it clicks on it. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Add-ins, Convert Image to 3D. We're going to select our flat image. The first one we're going to say leave the invert depth profile off. Now, what what you want to do to make this work good is you need your image depth scale and your platform height to be equal to each other. The width is all depending on the size of your logo and how big you want it to be. Um, and if you have a lot of curves, you might want to play around using the Gaussian filter to, uh, to, to try to suss that out a, bit, a little bit. You hit create and it is going to go through and ask you for a file name. Let's just call this demo one and hit save. Would you like to create, import the created model? We're going to hit yes. Now that's going to drop it in the middle of your bed. As you can see, it used that black and white area to give you a depth. So this is actually kind of, if you can tell there, it's recessed and into it. Now, we're going to repeat this process one more time and do the exact same thing. We're going to navigate to the same, uh, same graphic file. This time we're going to leave everything the same except we're going to invert the depth profile. I'm going to hit create. It's going to ask you to give it a name. And we'll just call this demo without a letter. I'm going to hit save. Now, this is important. Do you want to import it directly? And you do, because you want it to drop it right on top of the other one. So when you do that, they end up flush at the top, and they insert, insert or inset inside of each other. 
Um, now what's pretty cool that you can do here with this is if you want to play with that layering just a little bit, you can actually select one or the other of the two models. Um, and you'll be able to see it there as I do this. You can actually bump it up a little bit or actually decrease the depth a little bit. So it gives it a kind of a three dimensional depth to it. And likewise, if you wanted to, to try the other one, you can kind of get a, some neat effects by doing it that way as well. Um, but I like leaving it at zero, zero and letting it just come out so that they align with flat with each other. Now, when you go to slice this, one thing I do want to point out that's important on your advanced tab here, the layer modifications, you do want to make sure that you start printing at height of 0.0, .0 millimeters, especially if you had used that offset to, to line these up so that they were inset or to create that depth. Uh, because what that does is it drops it down below the build plate. So by setting that process to start at zero, it makes sure it doesn't try to print below the build plate. Okay, so let's hit prepare to print and you can see how the G code comes up and what it looks like. We'll run this through. Um, it's actually pretty quick like this. And you can see as it goes through. Uh, now again, this particular logo, because of the text, would actually work out much better with a smaller nozzle and because of these depth. Um, a 0.2 millimeter nozzle would probably work a lot better than the 0.4 or the 0.5, which is what I currently have on my, my printer. Now, one other thing that you can do is because these are two independent STL files like this, you can create separate processes for them if you chose to, or use the dual extrusion wizard uh, if you had a dual extruder to be able to print those in two different colors. Um, and that's automatically created for you. I'm not going to go any deeper on that because I don't have a dual head printer. Uh, so I don't have the way to mock it up and say 100% that's exactly how it works. Some of the guys with the dual extrusion printers um, can probably steer you better or some of their tutorials could probably steer you better on how to do that. But the point I wanted to convey was how to take that image and create that, that depth like that um, or to create that inset just using the built-in tools in Simplify 3D. Okay, well, we went through that really quick. So if you have any questions on anything, please leave them in the comments down below and I will try to get you answers to any of those. Um, again, once it comes out, it should come out looking something like that. That is printed upside down. What I actually did on this one, as I said earlier, is uh, although the model's generated like this, I rotated it 180 degrees so that it the logo side went down on the build plate um, and that allowed me to get the glossy surface. Now these aren't the best prints as I said earlier numerous times uh, just because I don't have the best nozzle on this printer for doing that fine level of detail. So um, pick your nozzle accordingly and with that I will leave you to your day. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this episode of Practical Printing. If you like what we're doing and you're not subscribing, please do hit subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them below. And I do try to get an answer to every question or, or every comment that is left for me. Um, and definitely make sure that you give me a thumbs up if you like it or what you don't. Hit me up on Twitter if any of you try to print any of these on your own or, or, or do anything and it comes out looking great for you, uh, send me a picture on Twitter. I'd like to see how other people take this technique and put it to use. So with that, I wish you aloha and have a great weekend.